thank you all for joining. We don't quite know what to do at times like this. But the one thing we for sure need to do is to get together. That for sure we have to do. So already just to sit together and to put our focus in one place is already a big nechama. So I personally appreciate the alleviation of loneliness and it means a lot to me that all of you are here. We're living through one of the most incomprehensible experiences that the Jewish nation has experienced in recent modern history, certainly in our lifetimes. And the time period that we're living in now, all of us, wherever we happen to be, whether we're in Eretz Yisrael or, or we're in Chutz Laaretz, We are living in, in a Shas Milcham. All of us. The battle that's being fought now is not a battle between the state of Israel and those who seek the dismantling of the Zionist regime government presence and therefore irrespective of whether or not we're part of the Tzahal and irrespective of whether we happen to be currently in Eretz Yisrael each and every one of us is a part of this each and every one of us is at the battlefront on the battlefield at the front lines because this is not a war against a particular citizenship. This is a war against Knesset Yisrael, against the collective soul of the Jewish nation. And that means that, that it's a war on me and it's a war on you. And that means that it's a war against my two-year-old daughter and it's a war against all of our children. And understanding that all of us as individuals are part of something much broader and much deeper and much more essential and collective, which we refer to as Nishmas Yisrael, the collective soul of the Jewish nation, then it's a war against everything that our essential identity represents. The first thing is to feel pain. To feel pain. To enter into a state of wordless agony wordless agony to be noisa ba'al and to cry with all of those who are out of tears they have no more tears left to cry Before asking questions, certainly of the this-worldly nature and variety of how this could have happened and, and what's going to happen next and what the plans are, even before asking questions of, of my high, how could this have happened? Before any theorizing and philosophizing and spiritualizing is first to 
feel, to feel it, to feel what people are going through now. And to immediately channel that, as I'm sure all of us are and need to continue to do, to channel that immediately into double, triple, quadruple doses of love and cherishing and gratitude for all of those with whom we are privileged to experience the journey of life at this moment, on this day, after which no day is guaranteed us. And the Kodesh Baruch should protect all of us until 120, and we should live Bila Mavas Lanetzach forever. But in the meantime, today, hug your daughters and sons for the mothers who have had their daughters and sons ripped from their arms. Shower your spouse with love for all of those whose spouses are hundreds of miles away in the most unimaginable circumstances, uncertain of whether they're coming back home. And Hashem should protect all the troops. Call your parents. Say to them everything that you thought you maybe would never say. And even if it sounds silly and it makes you feel uncomfortable in the moment, in a time like this, we don't have the privilege or opportunity of waiting one more second to shower those other souls that we're bound up with, that our story is intertwined with. To shower them with love. We get together every Monday afternoon London time and it's morning and in the States it's a little bit later in Eretz Yisrael. We get together to learn Rabbi Nachman's Sefer Sicha Saran. We haven't had a Sicha Saran shir in a very long time because it was the summer and then the Chagim and it just wasn't possible to maintain the consistency of a week to week um, learning together. And we're going to continue that series now. And those of us that have been learning with us for two years, maybe two plus years that we've been learning, Sicha Saran, we have to check. We've already experienced together the Hashkacha Pratis, the Siyata Deshmaya, that a Kaddish Baruch Hu has given us with this particular series. We're without planning and without the capacity to have made any kind of alignment, the teachings that we happen to be up to without any planning of a calendar are always aligning with the time that we're at now. And I wanna learn this teaching with you, Be'ezra Hashem, I'm gonna share my screen now. We have to increase our Torah study, not decrease, mamish increase. And let's learn this teaching together, but before we do, let us take a look at the introduction of the Nitziv, to Hamak Davar, to his commentary on Sefer Beratius, which is the Parsha of this, this week. In saying what I'm about to say, I risk being misunderstood. And I know that that might happen. I'm gonna to try to be as clear as I, as I possibly can about what exactly I mean to say. But words are slippery things. And to open our mouths to say anything at all is to risk misinterpretation and I wouldn't have but Chavar are desperate, are desperate to hear something. So we're going to try B'Siyata Deshmaya to share the words of the Hamak Davar 
and to try to adapt for this moment in time the broadest possible consciousness that you can imagine and even beyond that. And even beyond that. At a time where our, when our tendency is to become super small, we have to now try to become super, super big like you, like you can't imagine how big. Okay, let's take this journey together, holding each other up, fortifying step by step by step. Says the Hilga Nitziv. Zeha Sefer, Anikra Sefer Bereshis, this Sefer that's called Sefer Bereshis, Nikra Bafiyan Aviyam Sefer Ayashar, is called by the prophets the Sefer Hayashar, the Sefer, the book of the upright, of the straightforward, Yashar, of the trustworthy, noble. As the Gemara tells us, and the Gemara quotes different psukim in the Sefer Yeshua, which refer to something being written in this thing called the Sefer Yashar. Isn't it written in the Sefer Yashar and in the Sefer Shmuel? And it says to teach the children of Yehuda, the Bnei Yehuda, the Shevet Yehuda, Keshes, to fight with bows and arrows. In Iksuva al Sefer Yashar. And the Pasuk tells us that this directive is written in the Sefer Yashar. What is the Sefer Yashar? Umafarish Rabbi Yechanan. And Rabbi Yechanan in the Gemara teaches, Ze Sefer Avram Yitzchak Viyakov Shenikru Yisharim. This is a reference to the Sefer of Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, who are called Yisharim. Shenamar. As Bilam said, Tamais Nafshi Mois Yisharim. Allow me to die the death of the Yisharim. And Chazal commented that this is a reference to Avram Mitzchak and Yaakov. V'yesh lahavin, says the Hiligan Etziv. V'yesh lahavin atam lamakar Bilam as Avesenu b'shem Yisharim b'yichud. Why is it that Bilam made a reference to our forefathers by the name Yisharim? under the influence of a phenomenal degree of Ruch HaKadosh that parallels, in some sense, the Nevu of Moshe Rabbeinu, as the Gemara tells us? Why did he refer to them as Yesharim and not as Tzadikim, Echassidim, Echadayim? There are so many other different positive Kinuyim, different ways of describing Tzadikim. Why did Bilam refer to them as, as Yesharim? Ve'a'inyin, says the Nitziv. Dinizbar b'shir sa'zinu, the Pasuk in Yisharim, in, in Azinu, tells us. Again, to go back to the previous paragraph. Ve'gam lama mechuna z'ah sefer b'yichud, b'kini Yisharim. And more than that, why is Sefer Beresha specifically called the Sefer of Yisharim? U'bilal hispal alal atzmai, sh'yia harisa k'mabali z'ahakinu, that Bilam Davin, that he should have an end like those who carry this, this title, Yishar. We are Inyan, and the Inyan is as follows. Din Isbar B'shir Hazinu, in Hazinu, which we read a few weeks ago, Allah Pasuk, Hatsur Tamim Pa'alai, Tzadik V'yasharu. Moish Rabbeinu in his final song refers to HaKadosh Baruch Hu as Hatsur Tamim Pa'alai, that whatever he does is tamim, is complete, tzaddik v'yasharu. He is righteous and he is yashar, he's upright. The shevach yashar hu anemra lehatzdik din hakadosh baruch hu b'churban bayesheni. Chazal comment that this that we refer to the creator of heaven and earth as a yashar, as one who is upright, straight forward, Yashar is to be matzdik din on Hakadosh Baruch Hu b'churin bayesheni. Is to understand that the destruction that took place in bayesheni, the repercussions of which you and I are experiencing now, and our fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers and so on have been experiencing for two thousand years, is shayadar ike shufasalto. 
that it was described also in the Pesukim as a generation that was ikesh of salsa, that it wasn't yashar, that it was twisted, it was, it was, it was bent. Upe rational, what that means is, says the Nitziv, Shahayut Sadikim Chasidim Amele Taira, that there were righteous ones and there were Chasidim, and there were those who were studying Taira. Achloi Hayusharim Bahalichus Elamim. But they were lacking in their Yashrus as it relates to Halichus Elamim. Halichus Elamim. Their relationship with the world, as we're going to see in a minute. Akain, mipne sinas chinam shabaliba, because there was so much hatred. Ze as ze, one to the other. Chashduas mishero shenoik shalekadaitam. Pier Sashem should to do that because they were jumping to all kinds of conclusions about the person that is not serving Hashem exactly the way that I am, and immediately they blew it out of proportion. And the Midrashim explained that there was murder taking place, Mamish murder. And to every kind of avla, and to every kind of, of, of horrible thing until that led to the destruction of the bias. And therefore, in this Pasuk, we refer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu as Tzadik V'yashar to understand that it was a reflection of what we had lost. We had destroyed Yerushalayim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yashar Hu. And we say, where did that happen? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a Yashar. Ve'ina soival tzadikim ke'elu. Tzadikim like this, HaKadosh Baruch Hu can't be soival. Even though they're tzadikim, but what a Kodesh Baruch Hu needs is tzaddikim that are ela ba'ayfen shaholchim b'derech hayashar gam ba'halichas oilam. That in the way of relating to other human beings, mamish other human beings, and even beyond, to every conscious living being, that they should understand that their Torah and their mitzvahs is for the purpose of fostering the essential spirit of the collective soul of the Jewish nation, the ocean of which all of us on the Zoom are drops, which is Rachmanus, Baishanus, and Goimle Chasadim, to be sensitive, like children, to be innocent, to be sensitive, to lack the capacity to handle any expression of cruelty in the world. Even if it is L'Shem Shemaim, and even when the time calls for it, and even when difficult steps need to be taken, and difficult emotions need to be felt, But to maintain the yashras, the yashras inside of us, the yashras that sits at the root of a nation that's called Yisrael, which is the letters Yashar Kel, that we have implanted within ourselves, Yosher, we're compassionate people. We are the heart of the world. And our heart has to break for the world. We have to be the most sensitive, sensitive, sensitive waters that the slightest breeze produced by nefarious forces that seek to, to destroy should cause the mightiest waves on the surface of our soul. The mightiest waves. Because that ultimately led to the destruction of the whole world, which is reliant on us having a Beis HaMikdash, that when the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, the whole world is destroyed. Now listen to what he writes here. This is the terminology that we use to praise our Avais HaKadoshim. 
Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef Atzadeh, the Shvatim, the Imais, they were Yisharim. We can't even imagine the level that these people were at. That Avram Avinu, Avram Ivri, as Chazal describes, stood up against the whole entire world. He stood me'ever. Not against the world. For the world. Begging them to allow him to share the light that filled his soul. For them, not for him, for them. And his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren until me and you today who share this mission. Tzadikim chasidim oyeve Hashem ba'oyfan ayoyser efshar we can't imagine the level of these tzaddikim. Oid hayu yisharim. But they were also yisharim. Hainu sheesnagu im umais ha'oylam afilu oiv de alilim uchu'arim. That the way that they interacted with the nations of the world, even the, the most wicked of the wicked. Oiv de alilim uchu'arim. They somehow found deep inside of themselves an essential love for life. And they continue, despite being tossed into the Kivshan at Eish, and despite being persecuted in ways that even now we can't imagine. They never lost that goodwill that Yashras for all of humanity, for every animal, for every plant, for every pebble, for every grain of sand, we're a nation that loves life. We're a nation that is bound up with the Makar HaChayim, with the source of life. We channel the essence of life. And we seek only to build the world, not to destroy. That's who we are. Because Avram Avinu understood that his whole mission in this world is to reveal the living presence of the source of life so that everyone could share in that source of life. Which isn't accessed in some mysterious way that a person all of a sudden gets a double portion of life and he's a superman but is accessed by elevating our consciousness so that all of humanity could finally stop looking at one, one to the other with hateful eyes and together with tear-filled eyes, with eyes of humility and yearning, together look up, look beyond, look in. Don't forget, don't forget where we come from. Don't forget where we come from. Don't forget what this war is about. It's not about a state, and it's not about even Am Yisrael as a people. It's about what we are, B'Shoyrish, and it's about who we must continue to be, not despite the time that we're in now and what we're experiencing, but specifically because of it. This is who we are to get stamped down, and to love regardless. And not to fall prey to the most horrible, nefarious, devious subplot of all plots against the Jewish nation, which is to turn us into them. Not to fall prey to that and to feel all the feelings we must feel for those who hate us 
And to remember what the Psukim describe Yishmael as para Adam. And to recognize that. And that those that are responsible for sending soldiers in and for making the plans and those that got up to fight must, with every ounce of vigor that they contain within their bodies, Hashem should protect them all. They must don the goat skin of Esav, Yadayim, Yaday Esav. They must fight. And they must avenge the blood of those who are, who are slaughtered. And they must redeem those who are held in captivity. And they mustn't have mercy. But underneath, 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 underneath. Let's not lose touch with our kol kol Yaakov. Because if we lose that, then we lost everything. And I know I'm saying something that sounds like an impossible thing for, I'm telling you, I said before, I'm going to be mis misunderstood. Hold with me. Let's do it again. We can hold two things at once. We must at once, there aren't enough words. Any word is an understatement for what we must be feeling now. Heartbroken, shattered, bewildered, doesn't do the justice. Silence does justice, only silence. And we must feel that to the utmost nth degree of every extent and practical measures need to be taken that show no mercy for a situation that's untenable, that's been untenable, and that will not continue to be untenable from here on in. Because we must stand up for MS. And at the same time, at the same time, at the same time, at the same time, it is possible at the same time to continue to feel compassion for the world. To continue to feel hurt when any child of any background and any race and any religion and any creed has the innocence, the spark of heaven in his or her eyes snuffed out because of the wickedness of those who are acting in ways that children can't begin to fathom. There is no equivocation. Am Yisrael is our family. Am Yisrael is our, is our lifeblood. Am Yisrael is our source. Am Yisrael is kol Yisrael aravim zelazeh. It's enoi daime to the billionth degree. But human beings are human beings. And what makes us so incredibly special as a nation, Adarabah, what it is that they're fighting against, is that we recognize that. We have a kol kol Yaakov. We're sensitive people. We continue to care. We continue to bless the world. We continue to daven for life. One of the feelings that many of us are feeling now within the hurricane of emotion that, that's going to take a very, very long time to process and it's not even time for processing because the situation is unfolding. And the mesim are mutal afanenu. And we're trying to salvage whatever we can. One of the most difficult aspects, at least for me, and I'm sure that many of you are feeling the same way, is what, what happened to, to my Elul and my Rosh Hashanah and my Sarasimei Tshuva and my, my Yom Kippur and my, my four days of Dalad Minim and building the Sukkah and, and my Sukkahs and my Hashanah Rabbah. 
and my Shemini Atzeres, and my Simchas Torah, my Akafas. What, what was that? Where'd it go? It's gone? It didn't do a thing? It, do, it doesn't matter? It's, it's, we toss it out in the trash, two months of Avoid Hashem. And we say that it must be that, that, that we didn't do good, good, a good enough job, that Kodesh Baruch Hu didn't accept it. And I mamish believe, I mamish with every fiber of my being, and nobody has to, I'm just sharing how I feel. If it's a value to you, take it and hold onto it with me. If it's not a value to you, carry on. And we bless you. I feel with every fiber of my being. That our avoida was neskabel berachemim uveratzeim. And that what we need to do now is not to make a chesh ben nefesh which plays out in our consciousness to say, look how horrible I am, must be that nothing that I'm doing matters, must be that I haven't even begun to do anything pleasing to Hashem, because if I would, then none of this would have happened. And, and now we got to find some meteoric way to change everything so that we can maybe matter. And our Avodah Hashem could somehow be worth it. No. No. We have to intensify what we've been doing. We have to continue doing what we are doing because the war is a war of spirit. And the war is against everything that we are. Not even that we stand for, everything that we are. And we march into this next Tkufa with our Rosh Hashanah, where we daven for the whole world, where we repeated the, the words of our prophets who were the first ones to bring a universal vision of what this world could look like if people put their weapons down and lived with a universal consciousness. Of the presence of the divine within life, the sanctity of life, of the fragility of life, every life. We march now into this next Kufa with those tefillahs. We march into the next Kufa with our Yom Kippur. We march into this next Kufa with our seven days of Sukkot when Am Yisrael would bring in the time of the Beis HaMikdash 70 Parim, 70 Karbanas, one for each of the nations of the world. We don't lose touch with everything that we've been learning and everything that we've been absorbing. On the contrary, we intensify it. We don't become filled with hate. We don't we become so consumed by anger that we lose the sensitivity that's germane to this people that was chosen among all the nations to be the conscience of the world. To be the feeling heart when all hearts have frozen over. We don't lose that. We intensify that. We're in a situation where we absolutely must enter, and we have entered, into the aspect, like we mentioned, of Yadayi Midayesa. And this is a Melchemas mitzvah, it's the, it's the holiest thing, to protect Eretz Yisrael. And to battle evil where evil exists. But let us not lose our call, call Yaakov.
the very reason that all of this is so mind-blowingly excruciating. If only they knew. If only they knew the love that we carry in our heart. If only they knew the compassion that we seek to spread. If only they knew the import of the messages by which we live our lives. If only they knew what we seek to see in the world and what our grandparents and great-grandparents gave their lives a million times with a prayer on their lips that one day ta'ir eretz mechvay decha. If only they knew that. That's the enormity of the tragedy. That's the battle taking place. And if that's the battle taking place, then we cannot allow ourselves to become baited so that in the process of this battle, we lose the very thing that is so crucial to protect. Our Yashras. Our single-minded intention to continue to add a light, to add a light, to add light till the end, to add light. Because when we absorb the images that we've absorbed, and we've seen the videos that we've seen, and we've heard the things that we've heard, and we live, some of us right now, with sirens going off in a state of sakana, we are forced to confront the nature of life in its purest and most naked form. We are forced to look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves, what are we living for and what is worth dying for? And at this moment, all considerations fade. All daily considerations fade. Everything, 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 as dear to you as you think it is, and I mean as dear as family, and I know I'm saying very, very difficult words to say and to hear, but this is the moment. There's a level beyond that. Even, even our closest, deepest relationships, we die alone. As a Hashem, we're going we're gonna to live long and happy till 120, and Hashem shall protect every yid in the world. We die alone. And that means that at the core of our existence, we live alone. And so there's something that reaches beyond, beyond everything else, beyond it, beyond it. What am I living for? What am I living for? Beyond it. The relationships that I have and the love that I share and beyond it, at the core, at the core, that bubbles up and manifests in all of those relationships, that bubbles up and manifests in all the different ways that I conduct myself on a normal day, if there was ever a thing called a normal day. But at the root, at the core, who am I? And the answer is, Anachnu b'nei Avram Yitzchak v'yakov. Ivri anaychi. Ish Yehudi haya b'shushan abira. The answer is, is that I seek to be a channel of divine sensitivity to the world. That's my mission. I seek love. I seek tolerance. I seek MS. I seek tzedek. I seek rachmanus. I seek tznius, baishanus. I seek gemilas chasadim. I don't want to see any child crying. I don't want to see any person with fear in their eyes. That's what I have at my essence, at my core. It comes a time when there are those coming against this, who have what's coming to them, who need, who need to be dealt with with the Yadayim Yidei Esau, Bechol HaTokef, Bechol HaTokef. 
And each of us do our part. Bechol hatokev. Not taking away from that in iota, in iota, in iota. Bechol hatokev. Kala rachmim al achzari is an achzar. But I don't lose my sense of nuance. I don't lose my inner voice of the kol kol Yaakov. That my heart is broken for the pain, not just of a state, and not just of, a, of, of, of my brothers and my sisters, but the pain of the world, the pain of the Shechina, the pain of all of existence. That's in a state of contorted, ang ang of, of, of contorted anguish in this moment. And so my tefillah takes on the broadest possible, the broadest possible form. My tehillim is for the essence of what is co being come up against. The essence of it. Not short-sighted and not short-minded. We're at the very, very end. We're at the very, very end. And so the crucial, crucial nature of the moments that we're experiencing now is to strip away every external layer. Every single external layer every external layer until we come to this nikuda. Rachmanim Baishanim Goim Lechasadim Or Lagoyim To be the light, to add light, to add love, to add understanding, to add compassion, to add, to add, to add, to add. To see the oneness in the world reflected in the unified spirit of its infinite creator. And to live and to die with Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad on our lips. We seek nothing short of that. This is who we are. This is who we are. Come on, Shana Royim, we go back into the piece. Kamishtateach Avram Avinu Lispal al Sedoim, that he went and davened for Sedoim. Avagav Shaya Soyne Aysam, he hated them. He davened for them. He hated them. And he had every right to hate them. And we have those that we absolutely are mechuyiv to hate. But he davened for them. Ves Malcolm and for their king. Tachlis Sinna. Sorry, Sine Aysam the Es Malcolm Tachlis Sina Avur Rishasam Kemavur Be Mamar Lamalch Sadai. He hated them. Mikal Makayim Chafetz Bikiyumam. He desired that people, all people, should live with the consciousness of godliness. That is why the Jewish nation is in the world. Not so we could live in relative peace and security and let everyone leave, them, leave us alone so we can do our, our lulav shaking and tefillin pudding and our candle lighting and our tefillas and, and as long as they leave us alone. No! That is not why our Kodesh Baruch Hu chose us. We're here to channel light to them. That the psukim in Navi are not miraculous things that will take place at some undetermined point in the future, but they're, they're goalposts for me and for you. That we are intended to channel this experience. We are intended to reveal this reality in the world by virtue of how we think and how we talk and how we, how we conceive of life and how we look at the world and how we pray and what we pray for and what we daven for. Chafetz b'kiyuma. Uberaba and the Medrash Rabba Parshas Vayera, Isal Zed's brought. Sha'am our Kodesh Baruch Hu la'avram avinu ahavta tzedek v'tisna resha. Our Kodesh Baruch Hu tells Avram, you loved tzedek and you hated rishas. You loved righteousness. You loved goodness and kindness and sweetness and love and compassion. You loved it and you hated wickedness. What did that mean? Says the Medrash. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avram Avinu, Ahavta lahatzdik as briyosi, v'tisna l'arashiyah. You loved to increase righteousness in my creatures and my creations. And you hated to magnify the element of cruelty within them. V'hainu mamish ka'av ha'moin goyim. 
And this is why Avram Avinu, and this is our whole legacy, was called a father among the nations. That even though the son, which is the Umay Sa'ilam, all the nations of the world in relation to who we are as the guiding light, that they've wandered and they've strayed. Yet, we seek their goodness and we seek their true salvation. Not that they should have the peace to carry on acting the way that they act, thinking the way that they think, speaking the way that they speak, feeling the way that they feel, but that we have a vision. We're taught your Eretz Michvaidecha. We have that vision. Where all the prophets describe the whole world coming together to serve Hashem of the Shem Echad, the Yeda called Paul ki Ata Pai Alta, the Yavan Kal Yitzur ki Ati Yitzarte. We ain't seen nothing yet. You look at the Kotel by Birchas Kehanim, it's a, it's a joke of what's gonna be. The whole world is gonna come together. The whole world is gonna come together. And at this crucial moment in time, let us not lose that in the heat of the, of, of the moment, because that's what the battle is against. They're seeking to snuff that out, so we have to intensify that. Afal pikein, afal pikein, afal pikein, I won't stop loving. Daika, specifically now. Hakol kol yakov, doesn't do away with the Adayim Day Esav, doesn't take away or diminish an iota of the anger and of the nekama and of the hatred but not to lose sight of the broadest, broadest possible perspective. The perspective of the Nevuah, all of the Nevi'im that, that, that we're coming to now, this last, last chilek in time. Ki beisi beis tfili yekari l'chol ha'amim. To increase in our goodwill, not to, not to, not to fold into our shells and, 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 and take five steps back away from our relationships with the nations of the world and the way that we've, after the Holocaust, we've become aware of the way in which that people are receptive and, 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 to, and to chas v'shalom now fall back into this. They all hate us and Eso Sainas Yaakov and, yes, Eso Sainas Yaakov, but, 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 but the Pasuk also says, the basi bis tfili amim, right? So that means that there must be some way that we can get beyond that. We must get beyond that. And we're gonna do that by never losing our spirit. By never losing our spirit, specifically at this time, to carry on intensifying the yashras of our avais, the kol kol yakov, the sensitivity, the pain that we feel for creation and our intensifying the change that we wish to see in the world, that we will, that we are, and will continue to be in the world. And he says, now that we've discussed this, and he goes, and that's why I have three dots, because he talks about the other Avais and, Av and Yaakov and, and Yitzchak and Yaakov, and how we see that they did the same thing. He says, now we could understand why Sefer Bereshis is called Sefer Hayashar, because it's the Sefer of the Bria. It's the broadest, broadest, broadest book of all the Hamishi Chum Shetayra because it relates to the fundamental foundation of creation, all of creation with everything in it. And at the core of our mission to creation, at the core of our responsibility to the essential spirit that sits at our collective core, our essence, is to be chafetz b'kiyumam, is to desire life, to fight cruelty with kindness, to fight the darkness with more light. That's it, just more light. Full speed ahead. To fight the darkness with light. So that even while the Choshech al that the whole world is engulfed in this cancerous darkness, let us be the light about which HaKadosh Baruch Hu spoke when he said, Yehi Ar. 
Let us continue to be the light. It's not a time for beating ourselves up. It's not a time for that. On the contrary, it could awaken a kitruk. It's a time to rejoice in our avoida of the past month and a half. To rejoice, not to look down on it. Chas v'shalom, to rejoice in it. It's a time to look back and to say, wow, what pride we have to be a part of this sweet, gentle, holy nation that gathers together in the great synagogue, 1,500 people on Chalamai to dance with their lulavim and asraigim in great love and harmony and peace and seeking the well-being of the whole world and, 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 and davening for the Umar Sa'ilam which we did the whole entire Rosh Hashanah and we do three times a day in the second paragraph of Aleinu L'Shabeach. What a privilege to be a part of those who are hunted and not to be a part of those who are doing the hunting. What a privilege, what a pride we should feel. Pride, not pushed down. On the contrary, we should feel lifted up in the most remarkable, remarkable way. We should be able to compare and contrast and to say, look at us. Look at who we are. Ashreinu. Ashreinu matoib chalkeinu. That we would choose a million times and all of us should live it, be well and happy and healthy. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu should be megan and should protect. We would live and die a million times and be mutilated and tortured for the privilege of being among those who are mutilated and tortured and not to be a part of those who are doing the mutilating and the torturing. And so we stumble out into the darkness of this time period after a Simchas Torah and we say, what happened? Where's Hashem's love? Where's Hashem's goodness, His kindness? And I look at what's going on and I say, how much a Kodesh Baruch Hu loves us, that we're on the side of light. How much a Kodesh Baruch Hu loves us, that we haven't yet forgotten the Kol Kol Yaakov that echoes within our hearts and souls, that shines the brightest specifically in times like these. What a schus to be a Jew. What a privilege. Hashem loves us. He gave us the, the tools and the cure and the healing. And he's demanding of us now as soldiers in a time of war at the front lines, wherever you happen to be, wherever you're living, wherever, whatever your situation is. It's a time of war. Again, it's, it's not the Palestinians and the Israelis. This is darkness and light. HaKadosh Baruch Hu seeks in this moment to intensify all of those feelings, to be more Jewish than ever before which means to be more sensitive than ever before. Which sounds paradoxical because, yeah, we're under attack. And so we have to feel all the feelings, but talk of hatred and anger. We must. But not to the detriment of that childlike innocence that is so characteristic of our nation. Which is what makes battling on behalf of our nation so infinitely and eternally worth it. That's what I'm feeling now. I'm feeling pride. I'm feeling gratitude. I'm feeling broken. I'm feeling confused. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling real. Because a person cannot see the images that we've seen and cannot live through the experiences that we're living through directly or indirectly and not be forced to confront the most real core of the essence of what it means to be alive in this realm. To be conscious in the form of a Yehudi, of a Jew. And we're forced in these moments to reassess, to reassess. 
What am I about? What am I living for? What do I think about? What am I concerned with? What bothers me? What keeps me up at night? What gets me out of bed in the morning? What makes me happy? What makes me sad? What is life? What is it? And in this moment, each and every one of us take up a weapon of one kind or another and we dance and we say, Anachnu dar mitzuyan. We say, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're still here. V'chal zay shim chalai shachachnu. We're here. And we haven't lost the sensitivity. Ashreinu matayv chalkeinu. To be among those that are led like sheep to the slaughter. But whenever we're slaughtered, we are sheep. We are soft, gentle sheep. No matter how many weapons we adorn our, our, our teenagers with and send them out to fight, and our fathers, and our husbands, and our cousins, and our uncles, we are sheep. We may have to carry assault rifles, and we may have to go out and battle the Adaim and the but we are Anachnu of Sayin Marisa. We are gentle people. We are the gentlest of people. We are the youth of the world. We are the sweetness of the world. We are the heart of the world. Let's feel pride now. Let's make up our minds in this moment to do everything we can to increase the light that we are already sharing. Not to look at what we've been doing and say, oh, it's worthless. It's good. It's so good. You have no idea how good it is, how sweet it is, perfect, it's beautiful. Add a little bit more. Add a little bit more. Nothing changes. The journey continues. It gets more intense. Let's be very careful in these last moments before dawn, last moments, to intensify that sensitivity, to intensify that big picture yearning, not to get drawn into the smallness that can be uh, that can cause us to be dragged into smallness when there is a situation in Olam Hazeh. Remember, there's something much bigger going on. Much, much, much bigger. And we're all being called upon to be Moiser Nefesh for Chayim. For true Chayim. Which, like we said countless times in the days of, of, of El, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, what does it mean, Chaim? Kasveinu b'sefer Chaim lemancha eloikim Chaim. That's what it means to live life with Hashem, to live life with emuna, with bitachon. Doesn't mean that everything's going to go the way that we think that it needs to go, but it means that Hashem will have the last word. V'niska Hashem levade b'yaymahu. And that lo yidach mimenu nidach. And that everything will be made right. And that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the ship, but Am Yisrael is an Am HaNetzach. Netzach Yisrael, Lo Yishaker. We make it. Light wins. And our job is to be soldiers on the battlefield for as long as HaKadosh Baruch Hu grants us breath in our lungs and blood pumping through our veins and a mind to be able to grasp the depth of what's taking place. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu shall protect us all. We are tasked to live every moment up until the end, if an end should come, with a song in our heart and a prayer on our lips. And that prayer is a prayer for the very nations that seek to eradicate us. It's a prayer for all the nations of the world. It's a prayer for every tree and for every animal and for every rock. It's a prayer for the Shechina. It's a prayer for the Tikkun HaSholem. It's a prayer for L'Sakin Oylem B'Malchus Shakai. That the whole world should be rectified. And Chazal comment on that word Shakai, that it's a name of HaKadosh Baruch that we refer to, which means, that there's enough godliness to go around for every human being to connect. That we're all a family. And we're B'nai L'Chairi. We're the firstborn of the family. And we have to lead, and we are leading, and we'll continue to lead. And HaKadosh Baruch is leading things. He's guiding things. He loves us. He loves us. 
He infinitely loves us at our core. He loves us because we're here and we have a Torah and we have our mission and He created us on this side of the divide. He loves us. We have love baked into our DNA. Let's carry on fighting that love. I'm sorry, fighting that battle to increase the light, to increase our gratitude, our awareness, the quality of the moments. Let's not lose those moments now. That because of our anxiety about the war and about who knows what might happen, that now we, we, we are bitter toward our spouses and our children because of anxiety. Well, why, why are you anxious? Because chas the, the unspeakable might occur. And why would that matter? Because we love life. And why would that matter? Because we care about the ones that, we're relation, that we have deep relationships with. So now's the time, chas v'shalom, to allow our state of bilbul to get in the way of our relationships. Lehepech! Lehepech! Now we have to live more deeply than ever before. Now we have to love our children more deeply than ever before. Now we have to celebrate life, the quality of life, like never before. Carrying the burden, the gravity of the tragedy that's unfolded and that is unfolding, but not to allow that to crush us. On the contrary, to allow it like grapes, the Gemara describes, to be trampled on to bring out the fine wine of who we are as a people. Ashreinu matoiv chalkeinu. Don't lose it. And I hope that I don't lose it. The kol kol yakov. Daven for the world. Add light. Be proud. Be batuach in your efforts. Not to look down on ourselves. No. No, 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 no. No. That's not the message now. No. A wake-up call implies that there were those who were sleeping. We're awake. It's time to rise to a higher level of consciousness. It's time to continue to wake up others. Ashrechen, Ashreinu. Let's live intentionally, deeply, with quality, with simcha, kama she'efshar, with positive thinking, kama she'efshar. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should protect every lochem on the battlefield, every father and husband that left home with the most incredible Messiris nefesh, not knowing if they'll return, and they'll all return, Be'ez Yosef. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should protect our families. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should protect our city. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should protect our land, and should protect Yidin wherever they are. And Be'ezr Hashem, with the intensification of the light that HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose us of all the nations, for the purpose of lifting up others, may we merit to see the Geula Shlema, Bikarev Mamesh, Bikarev Mamesh, which is a time not of our military victory so that we can finally triumph over all the enemies. No, that's not the triumph. If that's how we triumph, it wasn't a triumph. Our triumph is that people will come to recognize the Yashras of our nation. People will wake up and mature to the depth of the pleasantness that is available to us when we recognize and live with MS. That's a victory. We should be zeichet to see the victory. We should mamish see it, what we're dreaming about. And the nightmares should end. And we should stick together. And it's not a time to isolate yourself. It's a time to reach out. It's a, to reach out more than ever before. We should share Basuris Taivas Bazar Hashem. I know that we didn't get to the piece from Sikhas Ram, which is all about Yashras, but Bazar Hashem will carry on next week, hopefully under very different circumstances. And wishing everybody safety, security, positive thinking. Emuna, Bitachin, Pride, Pride, and Basuris Taivas, Bazus Hashem. Thank you so, so much for joining. If this meant something to you and you felt like it was a message that you needed to hear, Bazus Hashem, the, the, um, the, uh, the recording will, of this will be Bazus Hashem on YouTube, and, and, and I'll send it out on, on the Ilecha and be able to go ahead and, um,
and, sh and share it with everybody that you think might benefit from this. Ashreichem, ashreichem, ashreinu. Ashreinu matoiv chalkeinu. Anachnu dar mitzuyan. We're almost there. Let's get there together. Thank you so much for joining, Chevra. Besuris Tavis. Kaltov. Besuris Tavis. Thank you.